At Darden Restaurants, sanitation is one of our top priorities. We lead our industry in maintaining high sanitation standards in our restaurants. We have a big responsibility to our guests and employees in each of our communities to safeguard their health because diseases can be spread in the food you serve. As managers, a big part of your job is to examine each operation in your restaurant to make sure you're using only safe and approved procedures and that each of your employees is trained in sanitation and safe food handling. The purpose of this program is to help you become a certified professional food manager in your state. We'll cover the highlights in this video, but you'll still need to study the printed material you've received to pass the test and become certified. We'll be looking at health and hygiene, receiving and storing food, preparing and serving food, equipment and utensils, cleaning and sanitizing, and facilities. Since this program is designed for all Darden restaurants, you may see equipment or products you do not have in your particular restaurant. Keep in mind, these are general food safety guidelines, and they apply to all restaurants. There are three basic ways food becomes contaminated, biological, chemical, and physical. Let's start with biological contamination. Biological contamination causes more than 90% of foodborne illnesses. It happens when tiny living microorganisms contact food. They can be spread by air, by physical contact, and through food itself. We're concerned with four types of microorganisms bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. Bacteria cause more cases of foodborne illness than any other contaminant. Bacteria are very small, single-celled organisms. It takes an average of 2,000 bacteria to cover the head of a pin. However, when allowed to grow and multiply, they can become visible to the naked eye. Bacteria need four conditions for growth moisture, temperature, protein, and medium to high pH. Unfortunately, you cannot eliminate the moisture or nutrition that bacteria find in food. However, you can control the temperature of the food. Storage at proper temperatures will minimize bacterial growth. The danger zone is 40 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. By keeping the temperature of food out of this danger zone, you decrease the chances of bacteria growing. Heat kills bacteria. The higher the temperature, the quicker they are killed. The lower the temperature, the longer it takes. Freezing does not kill all bacteria. Therefore, freezing can't be used as a way of eliminating bacteria from food. pH is a way of measuring how much acid is in a food. Bacteria does not survive well in highly acidic products. Foods such as meats, fish, milk, and eggs are high in protein and are in the neutral range of pH, which makes them ideal foods for bacteria to grow in. Viruses are the second members of the micro world. They are smaller than bacteria and more heat resistant, although less common. When contracted by humans, they can be serious because they need a living host to reproduce. Some viruses can be transmitted to food by employees, by coughing and sneezing, or by touching food without hand washing. Proper personal hygiene is critical to control the spread of these viruses. The next members of the micro world are fungi, which include both mold and yeasts. Many yeasts do things we like. They are integral in the production of beer, wine, and bread. They reproduce by budding but are easily killed by exposure to high temperature. Yeast, however, can cause food spoilage and off odors in restaurants, especially in the bar and lounge. Yeast are easily controlled by cleaning and sanitizing. Molds are highly adaptive and grow on many types of foods. Some can be harmful if eaten. They will always affect appearance, texture, and aroma of food. So be careful not to serve moldy food in your restaurant. 
Parasites are animals that receive their nutrients by attaching themselves to other animals. The greatest food service danger comes from larvae or worms found in pork, fish, and other animals. Proper cooking kills parasites. However, never serve food if you know it contains parasites. Now let's talk about chemical contamination. Chemical contamination includes pesticides, detergents, and liquid poisons, as well as additives such as sulfites and MSG. It is illegal to have sulfites in your restaurant because some people have violent reactions to them, especially those persons with asthma. Chemical contamination also happens when there is a chemical reaction between two substances. A good example is the reaction between a highly acidic substance such as lemonade or other citrus drink and a galvanized container. This reaction would make the drink dangerous. Besides galvanized metals, other metals that can react with foods are brass, cadmium, copper, and lead. All cleaning agents and sanitizers must be properly stored and used to avoid chemical contamination. Physical hazards include items foreign to the food product, such as metal scraps from cans, staples, map tacks, broken glass, or wood chips. Cross-contamination occurs when a contaminated food or food contact surface passes bacteria to another food. Raw products are especially dangerous. For example, if you process raw food on a cutting board, you must sanitize the board by running it through the dish machine before it contacts any other food. Cross-contamination is a primary source of foodborne illness. Now let's look at the common foodborne illnesses we must guard against. There are two types, bacterial food infection and bacterial food intoxication. Food infection is caused by eating food containing live bacteria. Salmonellosis is a food infection caused by live germs from both humans and animals and is sometimes carried by poultry, red meats, shellfish, and eggs. Salmonella germs can be controlled by maintaining safe temperatures, but can survive in frozen foods. Conditions leading to salmonella infection are failure to wash hands after using toilet, poor sanitation of food prep areas, poor equipment maintenance, slow cooling of food to safe temperatures, and cross-contamination between raw and cooked foods. People who contract salmonellosis usually have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, cramps, and fever. These symptoms may last for several days and may be fatal. Bacterial food intoxications are caused by foods containing toxins or poisons which occur naturally in some plants or animals. This includes foods containing waste and toxins from microorganisms. One of the most frequently occurring bacterial intoxications is staphylococcal food poisoning caused by toxins from staphylococcus bacteria. This toxin is extremely difficult to kill because normal cooking will not destroy it. The best control of staphylococcus is to keep all food below 40 or above 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Staph bacteria are commonly found on the human body skin, and in the nose and throat. Cuts, burns, or pimples can harbor many staph bacteria, so you'll need to watch your employees' personal hygiene habits closely. Symptoms of staph intoxication include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. These symptoms frequently appear between one half to six hours after eating and last for one to two days. Clostridium perfringens intoxication is caused by toxins produced by Clostridium perfringens bacteria. The bacteria are found in soil, water, and dust, as well as in humans and animals. Generally, problems with cooking, cooling, or reheating cause perfringens outbreaks. Usually, it is a mild food poisoning, with typical symptoms being diarrhea, nausea, and especially cramps. Again, your best prevention is to keep all food below 40 degrees or above 140. Botulism is another type of food intoxication which is potentially fatal. Since it is commonly associated with damaged or inadequately processed canned items, 
never use cans that have puncture holes or penetrating rust. These can be signs of Clostridium botulinum bacteria contamination. Also, never use homemade products in the restaurant. Only commercially processed, approved products. Symptoms of botulism usually appear within 12 to 36 hours and include visual problems, dry mouth, and a sore throat. If the disease is not identified and treated quickly, breathing problems will develop, possibly leading to death. The most common foodborne viral illness is infectious hepatitis A. It comes from foods that have been contaminated with a hepatitis virus or through an infected food handler. It can then be spread throughout your restaurant by employees who practice poor personal hygiene, especially after using the toilet. This disease can be extremely troublesome and may cause the temporary closing of your restaurant. Symptoms of hepatitis are nausea, tiredness, and sometimes jaundice. No employee diagnosed with hepatitis is allowed to work in the restaurant until released by the written approval of a physician. Raw shellfish and raw sewage are frequent sources of hepatitis. Most likely to transmit hepatitis are foods which have been contaminated but receive no further handling or cooking such as salads and desserts. All of the illnesses we have discussed may be transmitted through food. Other illnesses are receiving national attention, such as AIDS. Researchers indicate that the virus responsible for AIDS is not transmitted through food and is not of concern to us as a foodborne disease. How do we prevent the spread of foodborne illnesses? Most foodborne illnesses are transmitted by infected employees. By training employees in good basic hygiene, you can reduce the chance of illness in your restaurant. All employees should have a clean bill of health. Cuts, burns, and abrasions must be properly covered with a watertight bandage or tape. Since most illnesses are transmitted by hands, hand washing is critical. Sinks for hand washing only must be available. Never use a food prep sink. Hands should be kept away from faces, noses, mouths, and hair. Fingernails should be short and well-trimmed. To reduce the risk of food contamination, employees' clothing must be clean and hair restraints must be worn. Good personal hygiene is also critical. Food handlers should bathe daily and guard against unsanitary habits, such as touching or tasting food, touching the mouth, and eating and smoking during food preparation. Coughing, sneezing, chewing gum, and sweating are other sources of droplet contamination. Employees should eat, drink, and smoke only in designated areas and never resume work without washing their hands. Make sure employees who are ill or have cuts always check with a manager before working with foods and watch all of your employees for signs of illness. Your handout covers the most important points in each section of this program. We will review some of those points throughout this show. The rest is up to you. The three types of contamination are biological, physical, and chemical. Bacteria need the following things to survive. Food, moisture, temperature and medium to high pH, and time. The danger zone of temperatures for food is 40 to 140 degrees. Viruses need a living host to reproduce. People with asthma can be allergic to the additive sulfites. The type of bacteria found on people is known as staph. Food service managers should be concerned with toxins and spores because they can survive normal cooking temperatures. Reheat to 165 degrees and hold at 140 degrees or above to kill toxins and spores. The illness linked to seafood that occurs when marine fish eat smaller reef fish that have eaten toxic algae is called Chigatera. The best preventive measure against Chigatera is purchasing fish from a reputable certified supplier. 
In addition to nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, another symptom of salmonella is headache. And another symptom of Clostridium perfringens is severe abdominal pain. The foodborne illness caused by eating food containing live microorganisms is infection. The foodborne illness caused by eating food containing poisons or toxins created by microorganisms is intoxication. In this section, we're going to cover receiving and storing food, which must always be obtained from approved sources. Food prepared in a private home must never be used or sold in your restaurant. You must make sure that incoming shipments of food are carefully inspected for spoilage and other contamination. Here are the guidelines. When possible, schedule deliveries during slow periods so you can carefully examine and store food products quickly. Check the truck inside and out for dirt, debris, and odors. These signs may tell you the carrier was not properly cleaned before your shipment was loaded. Check temperatures in refrigerated shipments to be sure that temperatures are within limits and frozen products have not started to thaw. Never accept packages that are damaged, patched, or taped shut because their contents may be contaminated. Check for signs of insect, rodent, and bird damage. Watch for carriers that include non-food items in the shipment. Such products may contaminate food products. According to state law, meat and meat products must be inspected by a federal or state regulatory program. Meat carcasses that pass USDA inspection bear a circular stamp identifying the processing plant. You may ask suppliers for written confirmation that individual cuts of meat have been officially inspected. Check all packaging. Dirty, torn, damaged, or broken wrapping and containers may mean that the meat is contaminated. Check all meats for signs of discoloration, which may indicate contamination, deterioration, or molds. Check all fresh meats for smell and reject them if there is a sour or rancid odor. The texture of fresh meat is firm and elastic. Any meat that feels slimy, sticky, or dry should be rejected. Check the internal temperature of fresh meat and reject cuts that are warmer than 40 degrees. Use only grade A poultry. Inspection information and the producer's identification must appear on labels on the containers in which poultry products are received. When delivered, Fresh poultry should be packed in crushed ice. The receiving temperature must be 40 degrees or below. Reject poultry that has a purple or greenish cast or other discoloration. Other signs of spoilage include bad odors, darkened wing tips, and soft, flabby, or sticky flesh. Fresh fish should be delivered packed in crushed ice or another method for temperature control and should have a receiving temperature between 32 and 40 degrees. Acceptable fresh fish has bright skin, 